Ladies and gentlemen, welcome for the very last time to the laundry room. That's right, today is the last day you will be seeing me trapped here in the back in the family laundry room. So that is a plus. Monday morning I'll be um, starting all my shows in my own studio down in the basement, my personal dungeon. Now, I'm sorry for the glare. My eyes are bugging me today, so I need to use them for the podcast today. Um, I know they give off a horrendous glare sometimes, so I do apologize for that. And before we get the show going, now, we all know the date, so I'm not going to cover that for you. It is Sunday, and today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com backslash pillar to post. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. So, either you're working out, you're driving, wherever you are, you have that option. If you want to uh, read but you're too busy, you have an audiobook to fall back on and it's free. Plus, they give you 30 days to test out your membership and their um, their products on Audible. So, that is my pitch for my sponsors of the day. You can also visit my Teespring store. That is in the description below. My FB merch and author page is also in the description below. And if you want to send a friend request my way, I will accept it on Facebook. Um, to my VidMe followers, and if you have not caught any of my videos on VidMe, you can find me at vid.me backslash pillar number two post. That is in the description below as well. And if you want to become a Patreon, you can visit my uh, Patreon page and pledge for as low as $1 a month. And next week, um, from Thursday all the way till Sunday, any podcasts uploaded will be uploaded first to Patreon and you will get those 12 hours earlier than anyone else before they uh, go live on YouTube. And you can find me at patreon.com backslash pillar to post. Also, Twitter. And you can follow me on Twitter at pillar to post 77. And my email for all inquiries or questions or if you want a story to tell them, uh, how, if you want me to tell a story about you or whatever question, I will answer it. And you can find that at steeldragon1234 at hotmail.com. Um, so like I said, all that's in the description below. And uh, you can find me on there any time. Now, I will be using Twitter a lot more as well once I'm situated in the basement. And if you're wondering why I haven't uploaded in the last couple of days, um, a lot of you probably are speculating that maybe it was because of the last live stream. No, that is not the case. Me and Red are good. I was frustrated. I was a little bit pissed off. I let it get ahead of me. So, uh, But we're good. Uh, shooting from the hip will return after Red's got his internet issues fixed and uh, maybe we can work on some things besides that. Uh, also, some uh, gaming going on on Pillar to Post 2. Uh, so, make sure you check out any live streams when it comes to gaming on Pillar to Post. And, um, like I said, Monday morning we are in my studio, in the basement, my dungeon, as you may call it. And uh, so, we have that. Now, getting on with news, we've got a little bit of news, and I wanted to make sure I dropped some uh, some news for you this weekend before I'm back to work tomorrow. Well, it, it is actually Sunday today. It's 2.44 a.m. for me. Um, I wanted to pre-record this so that way tomorrow, or today, I should say, the daytime, I could uh, finish up the studio, or at least partially finish, uh, get it situated so I can move my stuff down there. Now, um, I haven't done any staining yet. That'll be done over time. And basically what I'm doing for the start is I'm putting up, I put up, uh, one wall, the backdrop wall and the ceiling. So that way dust doesn't fall on my equipment. And, um, and then later on I'll be building the other two walls and 
the studio will be completely done. So there won't be any shelving up just yet, but um, the basics will be there. So you'll be able to see a lot better view than what you see behind me right now. I also want to get into maybe a little bit of green screen to test that out on OBS as well. And, uh, you know, change things up around here. So, news-wise, we've got Sean Waltman reacting to the drug charges being dropped. Um, if you uh, have forgotten, he was arrested for drug possession when he was supposed to fly out to a uh, UK uh, wrestling event, uh, what was it, about a month ago? So, Sean Waltman smoked, uh, spoke with TMZ Sports on being cleared from charges of felony drug possession for allegedly attempting to bring meth and marijuana through customs. Waltman said previously that the substance he had in his possession were Candida cleanse capsules that he obtained from Vitamin Cottage and not methamphetamines. Now he said that he was taking the capsules because he's had a yeast infection for the past year. His full comments can be seen in the video um, on uh, WrestleZone. Now, he was asked, being accused of something he knew wasn't true. And he says, it feels amazing because even when I was sitting in jail the whole time, I got the smile on my face and for once I'm going, wow, for once I didn't do it. I'm L.A. County... Yeah, okay, I'm going to say what he said. I'm L.A. County Jail for something... I actually didn't do back in the day years ago I ended up in LA County a lot all for drugs now he was asked about not being further pursued on a state or federal level for carrying marijuana and he says that just seems like a complete waste of money for the government I mean just having customs checking people on their way out of the country is a complete waste of money when we don't have money to waste he was asked about taking a lie detector test, and he said, yeah, it's a crazy story, man, but I'm not hating on anyone that didn't believe it. Now, I wasn't sure, you know, he's got a story past when it comes to drug offenses, and, you know, he's been charged many times, and like he stated in this, uh, in this tournament, he has been convicted of drug possession. So... It's hard to believe someone that's gone through that. And I've gone through the same thing with substance abuse as well as uh, alcohol abuse. So, you know, I know what he's go going through when people don't believe you right away. You have to prove yourself every turn. And it's hard to keep that smile on your face. But when you finally end up in the situation like he's in, and I've been in that situation, um, I actually ended up in county jail for breaking a guy's jaw now what happened was I dropped this chick off from the bar I was married at the time I wasn't um, having an affair or anything but she was nasty drunk like fall on your face slobber puke laying it drunk and so I was nice I gave her a ride home and she happened to live right across the street from a, uh, a local convenience store. So I went there to pick up some smokes and this scrawny drunk comes up to me. I'm not big by any means. I'm six foot two. And at the time I was probably about 400 pounds. And this little guy, about 120 pounds soaking wet, comes up to me and accuses me for sleeping with his woman. And... He threw a punch at me and he was so drunk that all I did is just back up a little bit. He missed me by a mile and I told him, buddy, you need to go home. I wasn't doing anything with your woman. Later found out it had not, you know, wasn't his woman at all, but who cares? Um, he threw another punch. I figured do the nice thing, put him out of his misery. So I cracked him once and I didn't think I hit him that hard. Well, I seen the... Uh, store clerk calling the cops so I just said well fuck it you know I stood outside my car I waited for him um, got shipped up to the county right away and uh, slept there the night this poor son bitch ended up going to the hospital got it you know wired jaw shut and everything and uh, 
you know, I was accused of a lot of things right away. My wife thought I was cheating on her. My wife uh, thought I was out drinking, which I was uh, heavily. Um, but, um, you know, the fight, though, was not my fault. And the cops came in later on in the morning and said I was released. There's no charges being pressed. Uh, there's enough uh, witnesses seeing that I defended myself. But the only thing they did ask me is why I thought I needed to hit him that hard. And I looked at the cop and I said, sir, I really didn't think I hit him that hard. But when his head hit the ground and that sickening thud, it's like, oh, shit. So I said, you know what? I just waited for you. And um, he goes, well, look at the size of you. Look at the size of him. Really? He goes, now, I don't know why he doesn't want to press charges. Maybe it's because he's afraid of you or what have you. But he goes, we're going to let you go. And, uh, but um, my family right away, it was like I was on drugs. I was boozing it up too much, which I was at the time. And I was cheating on my wife, which I have never done. I've been with this woman for 17 years. I've never once thought about doing stuff like that. But, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, drugs and that, I've been in that boat. My parents have always thought I was abusing drugs when it come down to it. And um, maybe at one point I did, but I've never gone into the heavy shit. So I know where he's coming from. Um, and I'm happy that he was cleared of charges. It means a lot because the guy has uh, had his issues and it's good to see him clean and he straightened out so much. So it's good to see. Ember Moon. Ember Moon made her return to action at tonight's WWE NXT TV tapings from Full Sail University in a match against Peyton Royce. It looks like the match will air on the June 14th edition of NXT. Now, we announced earlier this month that Ember was being pulled from the NXT Women's Fatal 4-Way match at TakeOver Chicago due to a shoulder injury. Asuka ended up retaining her title in that match this past uh, pay-per-view, which was a triple threat with Ruby Riot and Nikki Cross. There were rumors going around that Ember would need six months away from the ring to recover, but WWE's website has noted since first announced an injury that she would be out of action for four to five weeks. So that's good. She's back to on TV. That's a good sign. Um, Ember Moon will be your next NXT Women's Champion. There is no doubt about that. Uh, Zack Ryder also continues to train in the ring at the WWE Performance Center after being out of action with a knee injury since December. It was reported then that he would need four to nine months before returning to the ring. He's noted on Twitter that training partners include NXT superstars Buddy Murphy and Oni Lorcan. Now, Ryder tweeted the following today and noted that he just hit the Rough Rider for the first time since suffering the injury. And his Twitter stated, Hit a Rough Rider today for the first time since my knee exploded in December. Sorry, at Star Destroyer, hashtag return of the Zack. So it's good to see we've got two uh, superstars. One has officially made her return. The other is still making sure everything is going to be working properly once he returns. And that's taking place at the Performance Center. I wish them both the luck. And you know Ember Moon's got a huge career when it comes to NXT. Uh, I want to say, I want to quickly pause here right now. And I want to say hi to my son. He just got home from work. It is 3 a.m. in the morning. How are you doing? Hey, buddy. How are you doing? Oh, I'm tired. Yeah. <coughs> Had a good night, though? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to finish this up, and then I'll be right out there, okay? Okay. <coughs> Uh, we've got more backstage news on why WWE is interested in the broken gimmick for the Hardys. Now, if you watched my last podcast, you would have heard the news from Ed Nordholm that WWE is not interested. But this latest article states that, yes, WWE is interested in the broken gimmick. Now, despite Ed Nordholm claiming on live audio wrestling this week that WWE has no interest in the Broken Hardys gimmick, F4WOnline.com is reporting WWE 
is in fact still interested at this point in using the gimmick on TV. Now, as noted, if WWE was not interested in the gimmick, officials likely would have instructed Matt Hardy not to use the broken mannerisms that he has been using and teasing on WWE TV since the Hardys returned to the company. Um, F4W Online has since noted that the Hardys being embroiled in litigation with Anthem over the broken trademarks, which we reported today have been refused to the Hardys, is a clear indication that WWE wants to use the gimmick. If WWE has nixed the idea of using the gimmick, Hardy would not be amidst any kind of litigation pursuing the rights, and it would have been uh, dropped on his end. However, Matt Hardy teased today that he will be ramping up his offense against Impact and Ed Nordholm following Nordholm leaking Hardy's contract details and private communication logs between the two parties. It is said to be a common belief internally within WWE that the broken gimmick has the potential to be a merchandise gold mine, which is likely the main reason WWE wants to use it. While they gotta be damn fools if they don't want to use the broken gimmick, especially when it comes to merchandise. Because like it stated, it is a gold mine. They will be top sellers in WWE. They will outsell anyone when it comes to the broken gimmick and its merchandise value. Now, after Impact Wrestling President Ed Nordholm leaked private conversations with Matt Hardy and Hardy's old Impact Wrestling contract information, Hardy has tweeted the following, noting he is changing the way he handles Impact and Nordholm. And he stated, I wanted to move on peacefully and keep our incredibly unprofessional contract negotiations silent. Hardy wrote on Twitter, not now. So expect a lot more crap coming your way when it comes to the broken gimmick. I'm hoping it is done with a little bit more of a professional mannerism than it has been on Twitter. I want it to actually involve the lawyers, stay away from the Twitter and online bickering, and please just resolve it. If you're going to end up getting it, fine. Work it out with your lawyers. Get it over and done with that way, not over Twitter, because it's just too much. There's too much crap over and over and over again with this whole thing. And frankly, I'm tired of it. If you haven't heard, now this was, um, th this is disgusting. This is the first time I heard about it. I heard about it today because I haven't been online much the last couple of days. I've been taking care of business at home spend time with the family. But when I read this, I was, I was disgusted to the point where, wow, someone doing this to a kid. Couple charged in death of a two-year-old girl after performing wrestling moves. Attempted cover-up as well. I can't believe this is being pinned on wrestling. I can't believe any couple, any parent would do this to their child. I'm going to read the, um, the articles. There's two of them. Um, and WWE does respond to this. But Fox 2, now of uh, St. Louis, is reporting 19-year-old Cheyenne Cook and 24-year-old Richard Gamachi Jr. have been arrested for the murder of a toddler after performing wrestling moves on her and trying to cover it up. Now, the report says two-year-old Addie Cook died days after Gamachi performed a number of wrestling moves, including a Batista bomb on a two-year-old infant after she was taken by EMS to the hospital after experiencing seizures. Police later uncovered prior signs of abuse, as well as digital evidence that the couple tried to cover the signs of abuse up with. Wow, this this is disturbing. This is actually the first time I'm reading the article. I I wanted to, I, I read the first couple lines. I gave up reading it earlier, and I I just can't believe anyone would do this. I I used to play wrestle with my son and my daughters when they were little, but not that little, and I was very very safe with them, and I didn't slam them. I didn't do moves like the Batista bomb for fuck's sakes. You know, I would pick them up and I would, like, with my hands, 
put them down. I would not. Oh, my God. Sheriff Dave Marshak issued a statement saying the child or this child was essentially tortured. Our prayers are with A.C. Addie Cook and the investigators that were in, intimately involved with this investigation. Police say that Ganache abused the child over time. Her mother was complacent and did not intervene or seek medical help. What a fucking dumb bitch you are. Gamachi was charged with abuse of neglect of a child and was found to have abused the, uh, it's hard to read this. Gamachi was charged with abuse of neglect of a child and was found to have abused the child over time. Her mother was charged with endangering the welfare of a child. The child's organs have been donated to Children's Hospital and her grandparents started a GoFundMe account to assist with funeral costs. Wow. Um, I've always loved playing with my kids. Even today, I was my, my kids are 16, 14, and 13. And even now, I wouldn't pull shit like this on them. I have always been against abuse. I don't care what it, who it is. I don't care if it's an animal. I don't care if it's a person. I get involved when I see that shit. And to hear that someone allowed a love, a lover or a boyfriend or a husband, whatever the fucking case this guy is, to do that to a two-year-old little girl. It could be a boy. I don't care what it what it is. I don't care the gender. They are so fragile at that age. To do a Batista bomb or any kind of wrestling move is in fucking sane. To abuse a child in that way. Hell, two years old, I, I was tossing my kids up in the air, catching them and... You know, lifting them up in the air and holding them up and, you know, twirling them. And these, both of these people need to be put in jail. And they need to be taught who, I mean, what abuse really is. What torture is. They should be put in general pop. I've been in general pop. And I can tell you firsthand... What those people would do to people like this. It, this is disgusting. This is disturbing. And this is downright. It, it's almost to the point where some people need an actual license to have a child. A mother just sitting there complacent and allowing her boyfriend or her husband or what, whoever it is to do things like this to their child. Wow. That, that's that's all, all I can say right now is wow. Now, WWE, WWE issued a statement on the recent death of these, this toddler following the alleged use of wrestling moves. As noted, a couple was recently arrested for the death of a two-year-old and uh, of two-year-old Addie Cook after the child allegedly had wrestling moves, including a B Batista bomb performed on her. This guy must fucking believe he's Hercules to do this to a two-year-old. I don't care if it's a boy or girl. Do this to a two-year-old is downright insane. Police arrested Addie's mother, 19-year-old Cheyenne Cook, and her boyfriend, 24-year-old Richard Gamachi Jr., after authorities found evidence of prior signs of abuse as well as digital evidence of abuse that the couple tried to cover up. Gamachi was charged with abuse of neglect of a child and has a $500,000 cash-only bond. Never allow this guy fucking out of jail. Allow him out on bond? Are they fucking crazy? Now, Cheyenne Cook was charged with endangering the welfare of a child and has a $2,500 Cash only bond. Are you fucking kidding me? Honestly, are they fucking kidding me? This woman is just as much at fault as her boyfriend. She sat there and allowed it to happen and 
She's only she's allowed out on bond for twenty five hundred dollars. Are you fucking kidding me? This woman needs to be kicked in the fucking head. Now WWE issued the following statement to Fox Two now on the death of Addie Cook and the subsequent arrests of Cook and Gamachi Jr. WWE stated, We are deeply saddened by this tragic death and hope that the guilty parties are brought to justice. There is no excuse or justification for the brutal and ultimately fatal beating of a two-year-old child by a grown man. This is a clear case of criminal intent and a lack of parental supervision. That was stated on the fucking head of the nail because, wow, a 24-year-old grown-ass man killing a two-year-old child because he wanted to be a wrestler. He wanted to play wrestler. He thought it would make him look like a big man by performing moves like this on a two-year-old child. This guy needs to be strung up and beaten severely, repeatedly. Uh, I, I, I don't know how anyone can do this to a child. I, I really don't. Um, wow, that is just a downer. Now, WWE reportedly has asked World of Sport Wrestler to be in women's tournament. I don't know, that last, that last article that's hard to swallow um dave Meltzer reported in the latest issue of the wrestling observer newsletter that viper was asked to be in the 32 women may young classic women's tournament it's in interesting because viper was at the last world of sports tapings that aired on itv last december so if she had a standard itv contract she wouldn't be allowed to do the tournament Meltzer noted that it's not known if the WOS uh, project is dead, if Viper was, has a different kind of contract, or if WWE is proceeding with the idea that the wrestlers can't be held to their ITV contracts since there has been no movement on the project. Now, as noted, World of Sports uh, announced a partnership with Anthem last March to bring WOS wrestling back to ITV which is the number two network in the UK with an initial commission for a 10 part series. They were scheduled to tape television this month, but the tapings were canceled. Meltzer added that people close to the world of sports uh, situation have said that the ITV deal is still alive. They are reportedly looking at several options to work with, with one being working with impact. However, nothing will be happening anytime soon. The May Young Classic Tournament will tape on Thursday, July 13th and Friday, July 14th at Full Sail University. Uh, those tickets went on sale this past Friday. So, they're still seeking women for this tournament. They've, uh, they've got till July, so I'm hoping they get the women they want. I hope those women are interesting and worthy of following on WWE programming. Uh, Road Warrior recently spoke out on, uh, Road Warrior Animal, I should say, recently spoke out on why the Dudley boys aren't as legendary as they believe. And he also speaks about his favorite tag teams. Now, former WWE and WCW tag team champion Road Warrior Animal recently did an interview with Hannibal TV to talk about who he thinks are the best tag teams of all time. Now, his thoughts on the Dudley boys... And he states, let me sum this up. I got nothing against Devon or Bubba. Devon is a great guy. I love him. They were good back in ECW in the early years. I'm going to say this, but here's the bottom line. You can say you're the greatest because you won the WWE Championship so many times, all the TNA Championships, but come in my shoes where you've won 14 different World Championships. I'm talking Australia, Mexico, six different Japanese company belts, AWA, NWA, WCW, WWF, and WWE. Right there, you've got 12 championships. Not only are you going down to Portland and winning those titles, going to Mexico City, I've been a part of 14 different belts. Even Hawk and I have been 
at least 10, 12 different titles. The only team ever to take the international belts out of Japan and defend them against the AWA and WA and not WWF, but those titles and the WC title, titles and made the international belts famous. They ain't done that. I have nothing against the Dudleys, but let's be real to all the fans out there. You've got to be real when it's time to be real and be honest. Listen, Hulk Hogan is the greatest single thing to ever happen to the wrestling business, and I'll be the first one to say it. When something is true, you have to say it. The best entertainer to ever come out of this business is The Rock. Number one best entertaining guy ever, and has set the wrestling standard that nobody will ever match. The guy did $170 million in profit this year alone. No wrestler will ever do that ever in movies. I'm the first one to say it. So the Dudleys come out here and say that kind of crap. They really need to think about it. And before they open up their mouths and say, okay, did we really do anything? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's see where we are. Okay, did we really do anything that was better than the Road Warriors? The answer is simple. No. Are they great? Yeah, they're great. But they're not the Road Warriors. They're not going to go down in history as a legendary status. He also talks about his favorite tag team to have watched throughout the years. And he says Steiners are right up there. Steiners are up there. There's a lot of not really well tag teams. The Horsemen were phenomenal. Midnight Express, the Rock and Roll Express. So underrated as far as tag teams go. Do you remember at the end of the first Cold War when they put Ivan and Nikita Koloff against Hulk and I at the Great American Bash? And we both were heels and turned us red, white, and blue USA. Came out with the American flag on a motorcycle. Are you kidding me? The Russians against the American badasses turned us stone cold baby face. Good guys. And from then on, we don't look back. There were some great teams, Crusher Khrushchev and Nikita Koloff, two big Russian boys that we fought. The Hart Foundation, come on. We wrestled some monster teams, the Briscoes, the Funks. The Funks beat us up all over Japan and helped us in Japan. So, I mean, I think we're going to go down in history, and there's a lot of great teams, but I think the Steiners probably have to be at the top of that tier. Well, folks, that is all for Sunday. Um, this has been the Pillar to Post weekend report. I do apologize that I have not been uploading the last couple of days, but I want to get my studio as far done as possible so I can bring my equipment down there and start shooting from a new uh, location with a better scenery and um, you know I'll show you what I've done and I'll show you the disaster zone that the basement has become because of this work but uh, that's for Monday so you guys enjoy this I will catch you guys on Monday for a special streaming of pillar to post as well as following what happens on raw later that night so you guys have a good day Thank you for watching. Please, if you have not done so as of yet, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Please click that little bell. It'll make sure you get all the notifications whenever I upload or go live. Have a great day, people.